What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for data science. In today's video we're going to mix a lot of different topics. So we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, pandas, data frame functions, about sorting, iterating, so all kinds of different things. So let us get into the code. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is using numpy functions on data frame columns. So the first thing is we're going to import numpy as np. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say df and going to pick a column like age or height. Let's take height. And what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to use the apply function to apply a numpy function onto this uh, height. Of course, this does not only work with numpy functions, it works with all kinds of functions, but since data frames and numpy are somehow related, uh, we're going to use numpy functions. So I'm going to say np.sign, for example. Notice again, I'm not calling the function, I'm just referring to it. And of course, the result has to be printed. In this case, of course, it doesn't make a lot of sense to take the sign of a height, but the result is a data frame uh, column, or actually it looks more like a series, where we have the uh, social security number as the index and then the sign values as the values, of course. And of course, I can do this with the square root function, all kinds of different things. As you can see, as I said, for heights and ages, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do this, but uh, we can do this with other numerical values. Now, this is, of course, not the only way to do that. Another way that we can use uh, or we can apply operations onto this column is to use so-called lambda expressions. And I might get into lambda expressions in the future in a separate video, but for now, we're just going to uh, look at it superficially. So we're just going to say a lambda, which is the keyword for lambda expressions, uh, and then we're going to define a variable, for example, x. And this variable represents now all the individual elements in this column. So every single height, in this case, all four heights. So x is uh, 176, 165, and so on. And now I'm just going to say what happens to x. So I'm going to say x times 100, for example. And this line of code here, what it does is it basically takes all the heights and multiplies them by 100 it's more or less an anonymous function here, as you can see. And I can do all kinds of different things here. I can say power of 2 or floor, floor division by 8, whatever I want. I can just use a lambda expression to do this. So now we're going to talk about different ways to iterate over data frames, because there's not just one way, there are multiple ways to do that. And the most intuitive one is, of course, to say just for x in df, print x. And this is a fine or a good way to do it, but the problem here is that we just get the keys uh, or the indices or the row names. So we get name, age, height, and gender, and that's it. We don't get any information. Now, what I could do, of course, is I could say um, dfh, and then I, I would get all the ages because it iterates over the column, so this works. But if I want to have a combination of the information, if I want to have a professional uh, iteration, I would do it in a different way. And the way I would do it is I would say for, and then I specify two things. I specify two variables, basically, one for the keys and one for the values. Now, you can call these x and y if you want, but I'm going to call them key and value. So for every key and every value in, and now we have to say df, and let's pick the h column, dfh dot iter items. And now I say print, and we could choose to format a string. So placeholder, colon, placeholder, then format, key, and value. And when I do this, you'll see that I get key and value in a string like that. So I get the key, 123, which is the social security number, uh, and then I get the value. Of course, this also works for the whole data frame. So if I don't pick a column, but just say df.iter items, it would go ahead and do this for the whole uh, data frame. Now, another way to do this, if I want to iterate over the rows, is I could just say for x in, or you could call it for row in df.iter rows, and then it would just give me the whole row. So a detailed view of that, as you can see, in form of a tuple, more or less. So this is the; these are the different ways that you can iterate over data frames. 
Now, last but not least, let's talk about sorting and sorting by index and sorting by values because a data frame can be sorted in a multiple ways. So one of them would be to sort by index. In this case, of course, our data frame is already sorted by index because I chose an ascending order here. But if I was to change this number, for example, to 211, and I go ahead and print the data frame, what happens is that I get a not sorted data frame. So you'll see that I have uh, 123, 445, and then 211, which is not sorted. The names are, uh, I think, also not sorted. Maybe they are. Um, the ages are not sorted. The height is not sorted. Nothing is sorted, basically. I mean, you could say the gender is sorted, but um, this is not the case. So I can change all these values and nothing is sorted then. Uh, and I, I can now go ahead and say df.sortindex to sort by index. And of course, what I can do is I can either print the result or I can say in place equals true to just apply the changes directly to the data frame. And then I can go ahead and say print df. And even though we have uh, no order here, it will now sort the whole array and change the order. Now, I could also go ahead and say, okay, I don't care about the index, sort by value. So sort values, and now I can specify the by parameter. So I can say by, and then I open up a list and pass the column. So first I wanna sort by name. So I can say name, and second of all, when I sort it by name, I wanna sort by H. So now what happens is, of course, I have to say in place, in place equals true. <clears throat> the F. Uh, what now happens is it will be sorted by names, of course. So actually it's the same thing. Uh, it's the same names, of course, uh, because it was already sorted. But what I can now do is, of course, if I have two people with the same name, so let's say Bob, is now also John. Now I have Anna, John, John, and Mike. But one John is 43 years old and one is 82 years old. But let's swap that around so that we have something to sort. So now it's 83 and 42. So the first John is actually older than the second John. So we would have to change that uh, in the order of the data frame. So now we put the John which is or who is 42 years old before the John who is 83 years old because the first thing is we want to always sort by uh, name and then we want to sort by age. Of course, I can also reverse that and say, okay, first the age, then the name. And this would lead to Mike being at the top because he's the youngest, then Anna, then John, and then again John. So this is how you sort by index and how you sort by values. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit the like button to support these videos. And of course, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And of course, also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more free videos in the future. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.